the management of third party versus first party reviews is significant because if you manage your reviews, okay, then you, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you literally, I mean, it's unbelievable how like even a Denny's, like this is where the opportunity for, and by the way, these are first party reviews here. Let me just scroll down here and show you. Okay, these reviews are reviews that came in through a landing page on their website somewhere. Okay, I don't, actually, I think it's probably on the same page here. If you want to leave them a review, there's probably a way to leave them a review for this store here. I don't know where it's at, but it's, it's typically just a standard you know, landing page. And when you go there, you can leave a review and it goes into, you can see Brandon left the review, but Linda left this one-star review. So what happens is, is these reviews, there's actually six reviews and they've got, I think they've got like a, yeah, they got a three O star rating. And to your point, Crystal, I mean, my goodness, you know, somebody that has a 3.0 star rating that versus a 4.0 star rating, there's like a 20% difference or 30% difference in the likelihood that somebody's going to reach out and call them or go to that, that this particular restaurant, this particular Denny's that's located in whatever here this is just a specific denny's in a specific location here it is in aurora okay not very far from where crystal's at so the point is is that my goodness if you've got a reputation management company that's helping you reputate helping you manage your reputation and you're getting first party reviews these kind of reviews that are displayed only on your website they're first party meaning they're internal they're they're like they're first party in, in respect to, to your business. That's what first party means there. It means they're, they're reviews that you only get like internally. And so you have full control over these reviews. So you have a seven day window, a quarantine period to reach out and talk to, you know, a uh, Linda. Okay. And, and engage with her and bring her back in. You know, she said she placed a $70 online order via Denny's. Well, have her come back in because before this review even goes live or went live on 31018, which is actually not too long ago, um, they have an opportunity to re-engage with Linda because they have Linda, that's what it was. They have Linda's name and email because in order to leave a review, a first party review, you have much more control. This is the point I wanted to make. You have much more control over a first party review because it's internal. It's through your own system. It's not through an external third party system. It's through a first party system that, that we get first party reviews. And the benefit is what we talked about yesterday is the fact that when you get these first party reviews, you can display these reviews using the Google, you know, like basically like schema markup language, which is a language that Google and Bing and Yahoo speaks. Okay. So that when you display these reviews in this way, using schema, you will actually have, unfortunately for them, the star rating show up with your website organically. And so when you go, okay, and let's just do a search here. I just want to make this point. So if you go to Denny's, Aurora, Colorado reviews, which is a lot of people are doing, or they're even doing, you know, as we have talked about more and more, they're doing voice searches with Alexa or Cortana, Cortana or, you know, um, assistant with Google home. And here you go. Here's, here's Yelp. Okay. But down here somewhere, I'll guarantee you, they're going to have their website associated with a three-star rating. And there it is right there. Here's, well, there's Inglewood. Okay. Okay. So here, here's an example. I want to show you this. So this is, this is their, this is how Denny's is doing this because they have so many different stores. What they, what they've created is a, what's called a subdomain, which is it's locations.denny's.com. So in other words, every location has its own specific web page. And that on that web page is where they actually put these reviews. And so what happens is, is if you use that, um, that schema markup language, then Google and Bing and Yahoo is going to be able to interpret that and see that there's actually a star rating associated with that page. And that is what is going on here. And you can see here that well, this is actually for the, this is for a different location. This is for Inglewood. I don't know why this is showing up ahead of, you know, when I, especially when I'm typing in Aurora, Colorado, um, Inglewood is showing up, but I, I'll bet you if I do another search here, if I go to 
page three, then that that location will show up here, which is really interesting that it's not, I mean, it's not even on the first, it's not even on the top three pages. But yeah. anyway, I want you guys to see that, and they probably don't want it showing up on the first, you know, two or three pages because they're- Yeah, I wouldn't want it to show up. <laughs> yeah, because their rating is a three-star rating and they're gonna, that's not, that's not that good. They don't want, obviously, they don't want, you know, to, this people to see, uh, whatever Brandon's or Linda's, you know, one star review there. And the fact that they didn't engage with that person when, okay, here's what I want you guys to understand is that when they submit a review, you, in other words, you, you got to understand the review process in order to understand what I'm saying here. You, in order to get a first party review, you have to physically send an email or a text to the person in order to request that they leave you a first party review. Okay, I'm going to say that again. In order to get a first party internal review, you have to send them a email or a text in order to get that review. A third party review, anybody and everybody, no matter who they are, can leave a review on a third party on a third party site like Google, Yahoo, Bing, et cetera. So what does that mean? The implications are huge because that means that in order for you to engage with those people, you've got to have a Google My Business account a Yahoo account, a Bing account, et cetera, et cetera, in order to even be able to communicate with those people via their internal communication portal. That's not as intimate as having that person's email and text or text, okay? So in other words, if, if you're letting me, like, you know, I don't wanna say the shame on you, but I mean, like, so, you know, like, it's your responsibility as the business owner if you have these people's names and emails and phone numbers and you're sending out these requests to re-engage with these people, if you're getting feedback from somebody that you've got an email for like Linda and they say that they've had a bad experience, if you don't reach out to them and bring them back into the store and, and, and you've sent out a request for a first party review, man, that's the opportunity. And this is where management of these first party reviews is so different than third party reviews. And I hope you guys understand that. I know we started a little bit, you know, late here. We kind of, you know, we're a little bit discombobulated because Crystal ended up, you know, having to go, you know, get her daughter in those last minutes. So I'm, I started it. I started the live video today, but hopefully you got that. We're probably going to chop this thing up because we really did get into some good, some, some good understanding here of the difference between first and third party reviews. And the control, the ability that you have to, con to really control the outcome of these, of your star rating, much more with first party versus third party. If you have any more question questions about this, go to m.me forward slash accelerate marketing. Um, and you can type in reputation quiz and we'll ask you five questions and give you a score out of 10 with less than, in less than a minute, you'll get a score out of 10. So you know where you stand in terms of your, your reputation. And we'll even give you an opportunity to find out what your reputation is online as well. So go ahead, check that out. Crystal, you got anything else? Yeah, we also created a, a Google document of some ideas on how to respond back to an individual when you get a star rating of three or less to yeah. kind of, you know, and I'll drop the link in, in the comments as well, but yeah. so that you can at least start the conversation because something that I, I really like that you say a lot, Ryan, is something is better than nothing. So yeah. this document at least gives you the opportunity to start a conversation and to get that person back into your business. Yeah. And I, I like exactly. So you, you can bring that person back into the business. You can start that conversation. You can send them an email. You can send them a text. You can, you can, you know, reconnect with them. And, um, and that's so, so powerful. I, I really, you know, I, I encourage you guys to get more reviews, get more third party reviews on third party sites, and also get more first party reviews as well, because you have much more control over those reviews and, and you have much more opportunity to really leverage those reviews to get true feedback from your customer base. So you know what's going on and you have a pulse of what's going on in your business. That's the one thing I've really always liked about doing reputation management and marketing is that it really does give you an idea of, of what's going on and the pulse of your business. And it gives you direct feedback. I mean, you can't get any better feedback than, than that. And, and the fact that there is that response loop built in is, you know, with first, first party reviews and even third party reviews to some extent, 
it makes it so that, you know, as a business owner, I mean, it's like the best way to keep track of what's going on in your business. I mean, there's no better way. I mean, I want positive and I want negative. I want all of it, you know, so that I can make good decisions as a business owner. And that's what reputation management marketing really does. It allows you to do. So um, let's, let's, uh, we'll talk later. We'll see you tomorrow and next week. Thank you, Crystal.